Have you noticed, like, beyond just, like, obviously the, the percent, Andrew Wiggins' three-point percentage is, like, you know, a career high right now. But have you noticed since he's been here, like, behind the scenes, like, gradually, like, oh, he's becoming a better three-point shooter, you know, over time? Uh, I don't watch most of his workouts, but in practice, he's always in, like, the scrimmages or drills. He's always been a pretty, you know, above average shooter. And then how it translates into the game, he's always it's just gotten better and better and better. And he's got more confident. He's looking for it and allowing the game to be a lot easier when he can just catch and shoot and have confidence in, uh, in those shots. And then... I remember three or four nights where he's had nights kind of like this, where it's anytime he touches it, it feels like it's going in. So it, it helps throughout the regular season, make the game a little easier for him, knowing he can pick and choose his spots, especially because we have so many weapons. When me, Clay, him, and JP are out there, you don't know when your shots are going to really come. And uh, when he gets hot, it's, it's just fun because he cracks that, that wig smile that we all love. And that's, that's a big part of what we do. You guys are making more than ever this year as a team. I think after 25 tonight, you're up. That, that wig smile that we all love, and that's, that's a big part of what we do. You guys are making more than ever this year as a team. I think after 25 tonight, you're up towards like 16.7 per game, which is, I think, two more than you've ever made as a team. I mean, does it feel like that? Does it feel like it's more than ever from deep? <clears throat> I know we're taking a lot and uh, making a lot. We had a couple games where – it's kind of bit us down the down the stretch, but you have. I mean, Draymond's making some. You got Wiggs, me, JP, Clay. You know, guys off the bench, Dante. You know, Moses hit a couple tonight. Um, Ants made like we have a lot of guys that if you're getting good quality shots, you have a lot of confidence that everybody can step up and knock them down. You still have to find that balance when you're, they're not falling. That's probably an area of growth for us, but. Um, it's fun when the ball is moving. Like it's a, it's a it's a fun way to play because you're creating good shots, and then that that avalanche can kind of come you know out of nowhere. Steph, last year you guys talked a lot about with Moses, kind of his maturity for such a young. Yeah, and then just a quick follow up. There's five games, but the third and fourth usually seem to be the bigger matchup. Um, does it mean more to play in one of those two slots? Not really. Um, I mean, selfishly, it's nice to have a little family time, either before or after, uh, especially when you're on, on at home. But I know uh, just the slate and the hype around, you know, basketball on Christmas Day is a great. It's great for the fans. It's great for everybody because you know everybody's tuning in those five games, no matter what time of day it is. But um, yeah. I guess the only thing it does set the tone because you get to watch a little basketball yourself before, and then you know there's some games after that, you know, uh, keeps you entertained. After that, you know, uh, keeps you entertained. Steph, the, uh, the Rockets have a lot of young players who are kind of being allowed to play through their mistakes out there. Is there a danger in that? And when you were a younger player uh, playing on teams that weren't winning as much, were there maybe habits, bad habits that you picked up that you had to break once you started winning a little bit more? I honestly think it's the exact opposite. If you're a winning player, you recognize what you need to work on and you're honest with yourself about that. And you keep doubling down on focusing on those areas of your game, knowing that it will pay off eventually. The losing attitude is worrying about yourself and your stat line and having tunnel vision on that and then not leading to you being a better player once things start to um, you know t turn for the team and for your situation in terms of playing you know or being on a winning team and, and developing momentum there so you know my first two years I knew I had to get better defensively I knew I had to uh, take care of the ball, limit turnovers and stuff. And I knew y you kind of had to develop a, uh, a look offensively that you could kind of rely on, not just shooting threes. And those three things I focused on every day. And whether I succeeded or not, that was the challenge and what I focused on. And then it made me a better player 
you know, over the course of those early. Uh, yeah, Steph. So in the past, you guys have um, really pulled away from opponents in the third quarter with a big third quarter run. Tonight, you got to a huge lead um, early on. Does that kind of change how you approach the game at all? I mean, you always want to go for that like knockout punch when you come with a, a you know a lead like we had in the, the sixteen point lead in the first quarter. You want to kind of throw the haymaker, but you know you have a lot of respect for whoever the opponent is. That it's a game of runs, and they're not just going to quit. So you just got to maintain your focus and discipline on what you're trying to do. Uh, that we struggled with that for a little bit tonight, and then 